And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildred, and with me I have a couple newcomers to the temple, creators of the uh, of Metal Heroes, the, fa the Fate of Rock, which, rec which recently had a successful run on Kickstarter and is now going for a round two with a full-on hardcover edition. Should it be hardcore because we're dealing with because we're dealing with metal? Um, <laughs> the one, the one in the red corner. We have the we have we have writer and and like and likely headbang in the background. Um, Sven Harder. Uh, thank you not, for inviting. Who is not? And in the blue corner, we have the we have the illustrator of this dynamic duo, Fufu Fraunwall. I'm hoping I got that pronounced right. Yeah, yeah, that's about right. Hello, everybody. So, how how are you two doing? Well, I I think it's I think it's tonight over where you are. <laughs> well, it's the afternoon. Yeah. It's a still very sunny outside. And hot. Yeah. I. Winter cannot come fast enough. Well, I kind of like it like that. Oh. I'm just I'm just saying when it, when it's cold out, you can you can always put on more clothes and you can take off. Yeah, of course. Um. But I do want I do want to open at the be at the beginning of sorts. So, Metal Heroes, you're de you're describing is described as a rock comedy um, game book. Um, how did you two get into the whole, to the whole game book thing? What was your introduction to it? Mm, my introduction was um, honestly in my early years as a little guy um, reading lone wolf books. That was my introduction. Uh, introduction and um, of course playing a lot of uh, pen and paper role playing games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me it was the same way basically. Although I wasn't, I knew Lone Wolf, but I, I didn't read it so much. Uh, for me, it was more the fighting fantasy series back in the 80s. Mm -hmm. um, now, since since you mentioned role-playing games, Fen, um, given, given where you guys are, I'd like to take a stab in the dark. Was one of the games you cut your teeth on... Um, I'll use the I'll use the English name because I'm not because I'm not because my German's not that mm -hmm. good. Um, the Dark Eye. Right, that's the most yes. famous uh, role-playing game in Germany. Mm -hmm. Das Schwarze yeah. Auge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I um, I have a review of that in the in the back burner, but it's what it's the most recent edition, and I um, only the last two editions of that have been tran have been translated into English, so I have no idea how it how it played in its early days. It wasn't a very um, yeah, simple kind of pen and paper role playing game. Just having five um, character stats, and I th if I remember right, you ha haven't even any kind of talents or something like this. Yeah, or perks. Yeah. Just it was plain it, and simple. It was, it was kind of like the early version of Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. um, well, but, as I recall, the whole thing started because because T, because TSR did, TSR didn't want to work didn't want to work with a certain a German publisher or some or something along those lines. Basic basically, there were plans on doing a um, a German translation of D and D, but the deal fell through. Yeah, it was Possibly, more or less a clone. It was more or less a, a clone of D and D. They like to do something similar. And haven't got any license, so they started with uh, with uh, Black Eye, Dark Eye. Sorry, Dark Eye. <laughs> um, now, with that with that kind of thing in mind, it's in it's interesting that you mentioned Lone Wolf, since that since even among game book aficionados, that one doesn't get mentioned as much as say um, Fighting Fantasy in my in my experience. But that brings me to the to um the concept of um met of metal heroes and the fate of rock i have to use the full name because if i use metal heroes i'll end up getting somebody confused with a um mm -hmm. with a tokusatsu series from the 80s and 90s um, right. 
how did the how did the idea how did the idea start start out? Was it ju was it just wanting to combine two hobbies that you happen to be into? Um, well, actually, I've, my very first game book um, was uh, a fantasy game book, mm -hmm. and uh, the the time I was promoting it, I always looked at the guys uh, coming to the booth, and um, they're wearing uh, most of them wearing metal shirts, you know. Mm -hmm. And addition, and additionally, I'm also a metalhead, so I was wondering why isn't there some kind of of game book in this niche, you know? Mm -hmm. So I started thinking about it, uh, making a concept, and yeah, just do it in mm -hmm. three years. <laughs> yeah, and since I also illustrated uh, Sven's first book, uh, Rider of the Black Sun. He asked me if I wanted to uh, collaborate on the on the uh, Metal Heroes book as well, mm -hmm. which I was glad to do. Now, with with that kind with that kind of thing in with that kind of thing in mind, so the as I understand it, the set the the set the set with within the setup you have the protagonist Taylor being. Ch Essentially, ch essentially chosen to build a garage band into the greatest metal act on the planet. Um, when it came to, when it came to this setup, were you guys going for a bit of a hero's journey kind of vibe? Mm. Well, I just thought about a weird, crazy story, um, having a hook mm -hmm. from the real world to yeah all the fantasy aspects the story has so yeah that was my approach to the story making make up the, the storyboard mm -hmm. well the i mean the, the story uh, or the plot is is uh, sven's domain so i <clears throat> can't say too much on it but um <laughs> i think um the shred description that you just gave gave is is um, maybe a bit um, simplifying it a bit because actually Taylor, the main character that you play as a as a as the reader or player of the book, um, he I mean I don't want to spoil anything, but he's he, he can't really directly influence the 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 plot. The, the, like this this garage band that you mentioned, they're uh, basically on another realm, and um, well, I, so it's it's a bit co more complicated. That's all I'm saying. But uh, I don't know if the hero's journey, like this classical uh, Joseph Campbell-like hero's journey, I mean, it's it's maybe related, but I don't I don't see the direct connection really. The the other um, now when it com when it comes to the idea of mixing of mixing of mixing music with um, with fa with fantasy. In the in this in this regard, a lot of people, especially especially on the video gaming end of things, will bring will bring up stuff will bring up stuff like Brutal Legend. Was that an influence at all? Yeah, this is a funny thing because many people are asking me this. I mean, I know uh, on I love uh, Brutal Legends, but uh, honestly, it, it was uh, parallel uh, development of both uh, products so to say, because um, as I first heard of it, my book was nearly done. So, <laughs> um, yeah, you can say it's a kind of influence, uh, like Jack Black or something like this. Uh, I love this guy, but um, yeah, not finally, not actually the, the, the final product of Future Legends, but all the other kind of uh, crazy metal uh, story-driven um, things out there, you know, the movies and games. So, uh, of course, actually, I, I, I love uh, the, um, the Guitar Hero series. I played it a lot. It actually, has not much to do with, with the kind of story, but, yeah, you see, um, there are a lot of products in the, in the um, video games industry um, which influences me. Which I, I can certainly... I can certainly get behind that. I can certainly get behind that. Um, now, when it came to when it came to the um, when it came to establishing the visual st the visual style of the book, what were um, 
what would you, what would you, what would you, and this is a question for you, Fufu. What would you say were some of the th some of the things that you were drawing, um, re that you're drawing reference from to get to get its um, visual identity? Uh, well, I'm a comic book artist also, um, so I I love drawing uh, panel layouts and and designing pages and so on. Mm -hmm. So when uh, when Sven approached me with the project, I. Uh, uh, yeah, I suggested that we could do that as uh, uh, for the illustrations uh, to make it to give it a more uh, comic book uh, like feel, uh, and and thus um, make the reading experience a bit more uh, immersive. I mean, it's all very already very immersive as it's a, a game book, of course. But uh, yeah, and um, so. That's what we did. Basically, we we some of the illustrations are just panels, or, or sometimes there are panel sequences that go on over the course of a couple of pages, and sometimes there are uh, full full page comic pages. Basically, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I mean, it does there there have been game books that use that kind of approach, but I don't know uh, uh, too many of them. Uh, there's actually only one that I know of, but I'm sure there is more. Yeah, it was a pretty good idea from Fufu to making this kind of um, approach for the illustrations, um, giving the book a complete new feel for a game book, I think. Mm -hmm. Now, given given the given that particular fact, I'd like to I'd like to delve a bit into the. Um, the mecha the mechanical end of of this particular type of um, game book, and obviously it being a game book is go is going to is going to be is going to be simplistic on on that end. But um, what's what sort of mechanics do what sort of mechanics are you bringing to the are you bringing to the bear to reflect the um stylings of the story? Yeah, it's, that's a good question and uh, very difficult to to explain without seeing all the stuff going on in the book. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, there's a kind of tutorial um, because uh, the rules um, are uh, divided into three difficulty levels. Don't know if it's uh, uh, it's is, is is it correct to say, but maybe you can beat me out. <laughs> um, First, the, the first difficulty level is uh, Pussy, then you got uh, Rocker and Freak. Yeah, If you're playing um, Pussy, you can uh, you have just to roll uh, sometimes a dice or, a die or um, making yeah, easy um, decisions like you know from um, most of the game books. But if you play um, as Freak, then you get the whole... Um, Experience or um, rule set, which, which is very yeah, like a board game, to say it at least, um, and you have to follow all the steps from the from the tutorial. And there are links in the from from the yeah, main story you're playing to this tutorial rule set uh, at the end of the book, and you always referring back and forth, you know, to get more and more involved to the rules. It's not. Um, very complicated, but of course, yeah, it's. Um, you it's can demanding. play it as a. You can play it as a casual gamer, or, or like you know, I think you can compare it to that, yeah. or you can play it as a, as a rule ner rules nerd or something. <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe that's the wrong way to say it because, as Sven said, I, I don't think the rules are overly complicated, but you, you can get more involved with the. Uh, with the mechanics, if you want, and if you don't want to, you can uh, play the easier, the, the simpler mode. Yeah. Is that, yeah. Can you? And there, there are many mechanics which are um, yeah, more or less uh, involving to the this kind of yeah, metal um, fantasy setting, like um, band chemistry or influence, because you are. Uh, um, Kind of rock god, you know, mm -hmm. with with the power to control people, and you you can of course use this power sometimes with this value um, to yeah control 
the people and making you know, funny things with them. <laughs> I get. I can. I can certainly get. I can certainly um, get on that. Um, part of the reason that I asked that is one of the things that Lone Wolf is is somewhat known for. Since you mentioned that was your uh, where you cut your teeth on this kind of thing, is the, is the fact that you that um there's a bit of a skill system at play with mm -hmm. um with it with it where your choice of skills at the start will determine what sort of actions you can take as you go as you go in through that run of the um, story mm -hmm. and yeah. i was yeah. curious if you um, if you guys are planning something similar um no there's no kind of skill mechanism in in the game um because for the main character um for Taylor you, the the rules are very simplified the the rules are all um yeah focusing on the band itself and each character has its own skills mm -hmm. um like um power um skill and present and as a negative value you got ego that's all the four um yeah, skills or values for each character, and and each character has one very special. You can unlock in the course of the uh, of the story, but it's very difficult to to find it. Mm -hmm. That's all. It's more because um, you have to see the the setting won't give up this um, this opportunity to fight. Or kill uh, orcs <laughs> or any kind of guys because you are playing the real world, you know. And there, of course, there are some kind of fights, but you not you not have the thrill of death, or you know, know what I mean. In, like in 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 uh, these fantasy settings, we are usually uh, playing with lone wolf or fighting fantasy books. So the approach of the rules are completely different because. Like I said, you don't kill any anybody, but you have to uh, play perfect or good gigs, mm -hmm. and um, you have to do good music, make good music, and um, yeah, that's that's all about of this book. And then sometimes later, without spoiling, there's a kind of story twist, um, and this goes, this becomes more and more, um, yeah not so important anymore making good music just to survive and uh, to save the world of the all the stuff going on in the in the background yeah it's mm. it's difficult to explain for me without spoiling and with this uh, language barrier i have <laughs> sorry for this so i have to tell all the the people listening right now i'm not translating this book <laughs> you can be sure of <laughs> i can, i can, don't if it if it's any if it's any consolation when it when it comes to when it comes to your English, um, this isn't my first rodeo when it comes to English as a second language. It's not and it's it's not even it's not even my second or even my fifth. I've been doing this for way too much. Um, one thing that I came that I came across that I find interesting in the preview is this whole re this whole rewind and for forward essentially um, mm -hmm. flashback like seg like segments. What, mm -hmm. what prompt? What prompted that? What prompted that idea? Um, this was an idea from my first game book. Mm -hmm. um, there, uh, there. Uh, this time I uh, used uh, the not just rewind and and uh, as you said, fast forward because sometimes you have ideas oh, which are developing um, in the future, or you want to. Take the the focus again back to to bring something back in mind for the for the reader, you know, for the player. Um, and this is yeah, an, an easy um, an easy tool to, to yeah to set the f focus in you. Um, like like um, um, just for an example, if the band is going to um, select the manager, yeah, you can choose. Do you want to uh, to to have manager A or B? But you don't get the consequences in this very moment, of course, of your of your choice. But with this um, 
mm, view ahead, you know, you can say fast forward and then the next paragraph goes on and in, in, in two months later, mm -hmm. the guys are talking with their new manager, blah, 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 about their, you know, um, their upcoming tour or something like this. So you can make easy time jumps without uh, complicated uh, um, yeah, sentences to, to write. Now, nope. I make this yeah. point clear. <laughs> the other thing that was uh, was brought up in the preview, but wasn't delved too deep into, and you and you can tell me in advance if this would be spoilery, is the lightning bolt symbol that's uh, that's on certain segments. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is actually the the um, view back, the rewind. You know, this uh, special moments in the story, um, and if you're going ahead and um if you the book is very thick you know it's it's very um very demanding game book and you are playing sure for a lot of days coming through um and sometimes you're referring um to people or situations and maybe it's hard for the people to tell oh, who is this and uh, what what happened there and it's important especially especially if you are um Introdu you are introducing some kind of uh, riddle or, or um, um, quiz or something like this. Questions about the, the guys or um, the storyline. And then you give the, the, um, the readers the opportunity to jump back and read this, this some a uh, few sentences between the, the bolts. And then they, get, uh, they should get... What uh, what to uh, what is important in this situation? Yeah, the necessary good, an easy way to try uh, get, uh, backtrack and get the relevant information without you know uh, having to search uh, the whole paragraph or, or the whole chapter or whatever. Is that correct, Sven? Yep. Absolutely. You should answer mm -hmm. the uh, the questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, now one of the one of the uh, one of the other um, th one of the other things that I that I was that I was curious about is you got you guys have you guys have managed to ha to collab with the uh, the always dope tastic um, Napalm Records who've put who um, helped who've published a lot published a lot of pe a lot of bands that I've in that I've enjoyed over the over the last few years. Um, how did how did you end up get how did you end up getting a relationship with them? Was it was it a case where you guys contacted them about this idea, at, or or um so, or something, or was it the other way around? How did it go about? Um, yeah, it was more or less a coincidence. Um, as I developed the the idea of Metal Heroes, the first. Yeah, the first more and more natural idea was to to have a soundtrack with this kind of book. I mean, making a book about music, then yeah, it's not a big step for a uh, think forward yeah to make a soundtrack. So um, I look for uh, newcomer bands and guys um, loving making rock and metal music, and yeah, it was quite easy to find people. Yeah wanting to be part of a soundtrack but in the end it was more or less um, a problem for uh, with the German law you know making music on a CD isn't so easy in, in Germany because all of this license stuff going on um, and I don't want to do that as an author you know making a be becoming a, a small um, music label so I was then um, yeah writing people in the in the business and in the a guy from Austria um, editor in chief of a um, metal mega the magazine there um, told me about the Napalm Records label and making this connection so and then the coincidence coincidence was that the the guy in in charge there. Um, was yeah a game book lover or yeah, he had he know game books very well from his youth so yeah he 
jumped right on the bandwagon so it was yeah an easy going then <laughs> having all the, the the portfolio from um from napalm records all the bands mm -hmm. which uh, what they have uh, in, uh, under under contract so yeah that's that's the story behind it more or less yeah um and since since some of the bands are going to be represented in the book um did you did you have did you have back and forth with with several of, with several of them to make sure that it make sure that everything was um was go, was going to was going to fit yeah um i had contact with most of them and it, of course with the with the label itself so not just for the for the bands but also for um some of the places like uh, Maybe you know Wacken. Maybe you've heard of it. I it's know one of the, the Wa biggest. Wacken yeah. is on is on my is on my bucket list of, <laughs> okay. of places of places I want of places I want to go to at least once. Cool. Yeah, this uh, this place or this uh, logo we are using is of course uh, also a trademark, so we have to yeah deal with them as well. But yeah, it's always back and forth, like you said. Uh, you have to write uh, all the stuff. You have to send it to them, and they have to check it. It's correct. Um, yeah, it's not easy. It's difficult. It's of course much more difficult just to write uh, as just to write a, a game book. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Now, one of the thing one of the things that I I saw a um I saw a small version of is the. Is the um, metal is the metal journal, and it looks it looks like there's a few stats on, on that. Obviously, obviously, I can't I can't see f I can't see for certain because of the because it's a small image. But what could you mm -hmm. tell me about what the met about what the metal journal is going to look like? Since I I'm assuming that's basically your character sheet. Yeah, that's right. It's a character sheet, but it's more um, yeah. You have all the stuff. What you're needing for uh, for the adventure on it, you have the yourself tailor with this stats, but yeah, it's it's really simple. Um, just uh, you have just uh, the, the your influence uh, and uh, some kind of um, inventory. Yeah, a few few slots, but the main focus is on the it's on the band with the four guys. Um, with their stats and uh, the special, uh, like I said before, then you got the page of uh, yeah w with your supporters. Just uh, there are five people with their uh, pottery. You have, can can um, cross them off if you're coming friends. And um, the next one, I should look at myself. <laughs> Maybe it's easier for me to tell. But um, you got the tour book. Yeah. Um, with all the possible gigs you can play, um, if you uh, uh, make your your tours around the world, and at finally the song, uh, the track list, uh, the the repertoire, repertoire of your um, of your band, there are um, a maximum forty songs you can unlock mm -hmm. throughout uh, the game. Um, yeah. Depends on which uh, genres you you uh, you are able to unlock um, and how many song points you can collect because uh, they are songs uh, much or harder to to um, develop or to to learn. Yeah, and they are they cost you more points. It's a simple system, um, but the the problem is to find the the correct um, balance between all the, your your songs you want to play. Um, yeah, it's more or less. Um, yeah, it's, it goes more into the de de details for the for all the the rules of the book, you know. And I want to go too too for, too too much into details because well, it's too complicated. And yeah. I would only add that uh, I, I maybe I don't know if Sven agrees, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, I think the this uh, song repertoire and and uh, this um, the the mechanics uh, that concern themselves with uh, you know uh, developing songs and and uh, planning tours and and then doing the metal the the concert battles and, and because you have to uh, decide which songs you're gonna play on the 
in the show. Uh, well, there. Mm. I don't know how, how many shows are. Do you play in the whole book? Uh, maybe twelve or so. I don't. Much. No, no, it's 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 much more. Yeah, yeah. I, okay. Oh, yeah. I mean, the possibility. In the end, you're playing maybe a dozen of of the these gigs, right? But right. Um, depending on what you're choosing, but um, okay, well, you have a total anyway. of uh, 30, 30 gigs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, well, I was gonna say I think uh, this this whole thing is pr probably one of the most uh, unique aspects or original aspects about Metal Heroes, and to me that was very um, a lot of fun doing that. And. Yeah, I, 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 and I also think it adds to the replay value too because you can, you can that second time that you play, you can decide maybe to to learn different songs and to go for uh, other genres or whatever. Mm. Yeah, and I want to add um, the soundtrack, the the bands um, which are on the soundtrack are all um, part of the story, and the songs uh, they are playing or. Oh, which are on the CD are also in included with uh, the complete um, lyrics and uh, at the, sometimes you're um, you should you should you should uh, um, listen to the music. There's a, a CD attached to each book, or you can uh, use a download code or Spotify or YouTube, um, and then there are questions about the music, about the lyrics, about the band at the end of the, the song. So it's more or less, um, yeah, more in involving um, you yeah, to the music the, and, yeah. The soundtrack isn't just a soundtrack to listen to, uh, you know, if you want to or not, but uh, there are uh, uh, certain points in the book where you have to, or you don't have to, but uh, if you want to have a bigger, a better chance at solving some of the riddles, you'll have to listen to the song and listen to what the lyrics say and so on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's more or less a, a bonus. Yeah, you don't have to. It's yeah, just having fun. You know, that's all. I, I got gotcha. you. Now, one of the th one of the things that I noticed that you put in as a bit as a bit of an add-on, and this and um, this is and set. Norm normally I would normally I wouldn't I don't cover um side games when cover when covering a main when covering a main thing but since it's part since it's on the reward tier I'd um be re I'd be remiss if I didn't cover it and that is Zombori um <laughs> what can what can you tell me about that and what's and what that's what that particularly is bringing to the table okay Fufu it's your turn. <laughs> yeah, well, this <laughs> Zombie is a card game, game that I actually uh, developed uh, with the help of a friend. Um, actually, a, year, a couple of years back, um, and it's it's a pretty simple idea. It's uh, probably everybody knows the those memory card games where you have to find two two identical pairs of cards and so on. <clears throat> uh, but my idea with Zombie was that uh, in this case the and the cards aren't identical, but instead they're uh, like a before and after shot, like a human and uh, and uh, uh, their uh, zombie counterpart. Uh, and um, from from that point on, I I realized that uh, with with the two different cards that correspond to each other, you, that opens up a lot uh, of possibilities for um, additional game mechanics. So. In the end, um, I ended up ha having um, one game that consists of three different games that you can either play separately or as a like a basically a, a zombie apocalypse con campaign, which sounds very complicated, but it's uh, it's not very complicated. Well, I meant I meant in one of my old D and D campaigns, I managed to work a full a full tournament arc involving three involving three dragon antis. So I don't so I don't see why not. <laughs> <laughs> At the very least, Zombie is going to be simpler than Three Dragon Ante. I don't know. Well, the third the third uh, game uh, mode is is fairly involved. Actually, it's uh, it turns into a kind of a board game where you have to cross like you have a, ze a team of human survivors and you have to cross uh, a zombie infested terrain mm -hmm. without getting eaten or turned into a zombie. Yep. Now. The other th the other thing that I saw as an that I saw as an add on that I, that I was curious about was um 
your get your first game book, Writer of the Black Sun. Um, given given the fact that that that, that was your first, and the, and you've gone through four you've gone through four editions of um, Metal Heroes. What have what what have been some of the um, takeaways and some of the lessons that you that you guys have learned in the years since? Do you mean um, about Kickstarter or ge in general? I mean specifically when it comes to designing game books. Okay. Oh, that's a tough question. Um, making s uh, things easier, so as much easy as it uh, should, <laughs> as it's po e even possible. Mm. Yeah. Um, in development. Uh, yeah. Planning. So. Hmm. I always, uh, I find my own tools. You know, as I very, as I started with the Rider of the Black Sun, I ev don't even thought about to bring it uh, as a book. Just, uh, just did it for myself. And in the uh, the half of the the production or in the writing, I uh, looked for a, um, um, a production house, a printing house, and found. Uh, Manticore Verlag in Germany, which mm -hmm. was a yeah another coincidence, but from then from then on I, I learned uh, how to make things easier. Not uh, of course as I as I started I just tried to write perfect perfectly in the form of a game book, you know, starting with paragraph one and then started um, um, randomizing the all the paragraphs and. and stuff going on just to have the perfect game book from the stretch you know but um then i learned it's this is not the the perfect way of course just write your storyboard just write down your ideas uh, uh, separate the the stuff into into um chapters and yeah make it easier for yourself step by step you know it was the first lesson i learned and uh, as I started then with uh, with the second part of of um, right out the black sun and uh, yeah had to do it's what was much um, yeah had an easier approach than you know it goes much faster then maybe What's you can curve? if you yeah yeah sure um, maybe can give you an example um, as I said I started first with with uh, with numbers as paragraphs then I turned um, to um, giving each paragraph a unique um, description in short words. Um, example, I um, instead of a number, I, I start with an hash hashtag or with an at as a character, which I know this is not uh, inside the, the, the normal um, text, right? Um, just have to uh, a character connected to this um, headline mm -hmm. I'm using, and then this headline is reflecting what's going on in the in the section itself. So maybe there is um, um, Taylor um, collecting clothes, just in one word, and all written in t in um, in the upper upper caps in caps. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it's only for the, your for your for your uh, to you, for your information. It's not for the reader. Right. You, the reader doesn't see this uh, in the end. Right. That's and what I'm, you're saying. When I'm right. When I'm finished, then I'm collecting all this headline into one Excel sheet, and then I know what's going on, and uh, replace them with uh, with the numbers, and then I can randomize it and yeah, and the, and yeah, I I always see on the first sight. What's going on in the in this paragraph without long, looking or reading any any sentence of it? All right. Now it's just a small example for yeah make make things easier for me. Yeah. Now um. Previ now not too long ago you guys had you guys had done a kick a Kickstarter for what I believe was essentially a soft cover version and this current Kickstarter which is. Which is um do which is doing pretty well for itself so far, is um is for a is for a hardcover version. 
the correct the que- the um the question that the question that I have is is when is um when it comes to when it comes to the when it comes to this ver when it comes to this version um what are you shooting for as far as a release window i i realize that um that go that hardcover is going to is going to take a bit because that's always that's always tri- that's always a trickier affair to print and we all try to release it in, at the end of the of the year the fall of 21 maybe there that this will suffer small delays we cannot mm-hmm. Be very. We cannot be absolutely sure, but we we try our best. Um, depends on how ex- successful is the Kickstarter. Are there more stretch goals? You know. Um, yeah, the situation. Maybe Fufu can t- can jump in as well for answering the question more fluently than than me. But uh, <laughs> I can try it. Um, first, as we started with the first Kickstarter in November. Um, Maybe you can remember this was not actually the the best time um, to do it mm-hmm. in the retro perspective. Um, and yeah, yeah the we are was going on, and, and there was in the middle of Corona and so on. So yeah, and I think that's what you were referring to. We 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 fell a little bit short of, with a stretch goal for hot cover edition, and many of the. Of the bakers uh, asking us, um, well, we want this. Uh, what can we do? And yeah, we just came up with the idea. Okay, we can make just another uh, Kickstarter for the guy saying uh, we want we want some. Um, and over fifty percent of the guys uh, who baked first um, came back. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. Make it happen. So the second campaign is still running, but it's founded already. So this means all the guys from the first campaign will get their hardcover edition, regardless if they have um, pledged for the new one or not. But yeah, yeah. So it's basically, the 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 soft cover uh, version from the first campaign was upgraded into a hardcover. Everybody gets the hardcover now. Now, but of course, we we are asking for those guys. Um, please come back, support us again, mm-hmm. uh, make more stretch goals uh, possible. Um, yeah, that's our our goal. That's our. Uh, we have a few more thing things planned more. for this mm-hmm. uh, for this campaign. Yeah, which makes which um cer- which certainly makes certainly makes uh, sense. Um. But with all, with all of with all of that said, um, I do want to sincerely thank both of you for taking the time out of your schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the um, in, and share share what you guys have planned and enjoy the madness that co- that goes down here. Thank you, and thank and, you. Really yeah. appreciate. It. Yep. And anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory. But it is encouraged. <laughs> yeah, always th- thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there'll be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody!